I'm going to show you how to make the sheep fold that I used in the story, starting with these little sheep. Now, um, I've done it a number of different ways. Um, and I think I've come out with the, 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 the best way to do it. But there is more than one way to do this. And if you want to do things a bit differently, that's really good. You have a little bit of an experiment. Rest assured... This is my first this is my first attempt the big ball I put too much wool on and it all fell apart and then this is some other attempts that I had so it doesn't always go right first of all and that's okay so I'll show you how to do it now the reason I've got blue sheep is because um I've only got blue wool I couldn't find any white wool if you've got some white wool that's fantastic or black wool um, but we can have different coloured sheep, that's fine. So you need a fork and some wool. First of all, cut a length of wool and put it through the middle prong of the fork and hold it down in your hand. Get the end of the wool, put it onto the fork. You probably just hold it with your finger. Somebody else can hold you and wrap it round. Once you've wrapped it round a few times, you won't have to hold it. But do hold these two ends. And then just wrap it round. Now, one of the things that I went wrong is that I did this, made a whopping great big bundle. It really doesn't have to be that big. Probably about that much. I have a bit of a play experiment. Then with your two loose ends here you're going to take the one at the back up and bring it back between the two prongs and you've got to tie a knot we tie a knot it's like pretend it's a snake this is the snake's head the snake's head goes over his tail goes round underneath and through the cave and pull the ends now you've got to pull it really tight now you need somebody else really to put their finger there to hold the knot in place while you tie it again. So I'm going to show you how to do a knot again. You've got a snake. Got his head. Goes over the tail. The head goes round. And through. The cave. Grab that end. Hold the tail. Pull the head and the tail apart. There you go. Now once you've done that. We're going to cut. You can cut the ends off so they're about the same length as these strands. Then we're going to cut these. Careful, I'm using safety scissors. Um, do it carefully, mind your fingers, so you don't cut yourself. Uh, but just slowly snip all the bits. Strands at a time. Until they're all cut through on one side and then turn it over and cut them on the other side and once you've done that you can take it off and you have your little pom-pom didn't cut those bits off enough so don't cut any long bits off There we go. Little bits. Now we're going to put the legs on. Now if you've got a pipe cleaner, fantastic. But do you know not everybody has pipe cleaners knocking around their house. So what I got was um, I found some black card. If you haven't got black card, get some other colour card and colour it in black. But I'm going to cut its legs first of all. So experiment with the length. Now we cut this, cut this in half. So I'm going to do its legs. This is going to make two legs. I'm going to make the two legs by folding it in half. So that's going to be one, two legs, back legs. And here we have the four legs. Four meaning front legs. And we're going to stick them onto the, onto the pom-pom. 
So I'm sticking on my legs. They don't have to be this colour card. Uh, it could be any other colour. Or paper. I used an envelope, brown or white. Um, whatever you've got around the house. Um, so I've got a little piece of card and I'm drawing the shape of the face on the back. Figure eight, two little ears and cutting that out. Eyes on the other side. Uh, two little pieces of white paper with dots in the middle and then just sticking that on to make my sheep. His eyes, as you can see, are joined up like a figure eight. But all you can do, oh, so he's, you can draw them on if it's a lighter colour paper. Or you can do little googly eyes if you can find some to fit. Now to make the sheep fold, uh, which I've used just from um, a box. Um, and I've cut a door out the front if you wanted to leave it um, just cut around two sides with it just opening and closing so you want to have a gate on it you can but in biblical times it would just have been a gap because this would have just been a pile of stones piled up that the shepherd found uh, lying around or some wood branches just to enclose the sheep temporarily wherever he was and in the gate uh, he would lie um, and uh, to protect the sheep on the inside and keep anything out he would know if anything was trying to get through that gate to get to the sheep so that's where uh, when Jesus says I am the gate it was based on what shepherds would have done then they would have laid or would have sat in the entrance to the sheepfold so we make that um, with a box and you need to put some green on the inside. So you can do that with some paper that we can draw around and cut out, which is what I've done here. As you can see, where I've cut it out to put in here, I've cut out on the inside of the line I've drawn. And that just makes sure it fits. It doesn't all ruck up. It isn't, doesn't end up being too big. Now, if you haven't got green paper, it's okay. What I use for a lot of the cross, and I'm going to use it for the stones, is um, a magazine. I got this free out of Morrison's. Um, and you can just cut out little pieces of green from it and stick it down inside it's more green up here you can cut out so i'm going to cut some of those out and show you what the effect would be so there we are um i think that's more grassy effect i like that effect more actually so it's more one way of doing it see what what way you would like to do it um i did the stones cutting out from the magazine i should say always ask permission before you cut a magazine up just to make sure somebody's read it so cut out strips and then cut them into your stone size pieces the smaller you do this the more effective it will be So, stick these on, the stones. So I'll continue to do that inside. So you can see you can build up the stone effect all the way around, inside and out. Now, I've done it a different way here. I've cut some little strips. And I'm sticking these on. They look more like... A slate walls that you get in Cumbria so you can do that's a different effect that you could do now so you've got your sheep fold what we need now is our sheep <laughs> 
shepherd the shepherd um, I used either a dolly peg or if you haven't got a dolly peg I cut out um, this shape from a piece of card about twice the height of the sheep um, and I dressed them in exactly the same way I got um, a rectangle of kitchen paper for his uh, tunic that on glue it onto the here and then just wrap that round as you can see I've used some wool for the beard and another rectangle for his headdress and drew on his face now with the cardboard one what you can do is make him some little feet that go the other way so uh, I've cut some slits here uh, and some slits in a card so you can thread that through to make his feet you can have two of those I've lost these other one it's around here somewhere have a long strip for the arms little hands on each end and I've put a crook on there just put in the middle and then he's wrapped around can glue the hands together to hold the crook and then he can stand up there we go probably stand up better than the dolly pin one oh no, he's standing up as well so you've got your shepherd i've dressed him in white because it doesn't say what color jesus wears in the bible but it does say when he returns he will be wearing white so i like to dress jesus in white now let me see he so he can go lay in front of the sheepfold and the sheep can go inside where they're nice and safe. There's my little shepherd. There you go. There we are.